Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Nez, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, uh, and also greetings to my friend here, Governor Lewis, out there, uh, from the Gila River Indian community. Uh, with me um, in the audience is our Vice President of the Navajo Nation, uh, Myron Leiser. And thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today on this uh, very important topic. The Navajo Nation covers a large area of northern Arizona, and many of our people still speak our Navajo or Diné language. They live in rural areas of our homeland and travel many miles for basic services. These three areas are my focus today. While we can acknowledge there are many more issues we can talk about today or at future hearings. Number one, language. Like many older Navajos, uh, I speak uh, both Navajo and English. I uh, grew up as Navajo being my uh, first language. Many of our older citizens speak Navajo as their primary language and are more comfortable talking to others in the Navajo language. As I understand it, the Navajo language is covered under Section 203 of the Voting Rights Act. I also understand this requires that all election material provided in the English language must also be provided in Navajo. The Navajo Nation continues to have issues with some of the counties and the state of Arizona providing sufficient translation services to Navajo voters in written material on radio and to in-person voters. We are working this out with the counties in our region, but there is still a lot of ground to cover. A point I must make here so we all understand each other. The Navajo Nation has always worked with the counties in our area, and we will continue to do so for the benefit of all our citizens, including these issues of translation and understanding of election issues. I do not want anyone to misunderstand and get the idea that the Navajo Nation and counties are continually at odds with each other. We all work for the people of Northern Arizona. Number two, rural living. The Navajo Nation covers 27,000 square miles in three states, just a bit smaller than Ohio. Madam Chair, your home state. Our, our capital is in Window Rock, Arizona, and we have 110 chapters or local government centers. When it comes time to vote on the Navajo Nation in Navajo state and federal elections, it is difficult for some of our membership due to the rural nature of our land. One example of rural living on the Navajo Nation is public transportation, which is available in most of the United States. There is no public transportation that allows for the pickup of individual citizens at their place of residence. This severely limits the transportation options for the elderly and disabled citizens. People are reliant on relatives or friends for rides, especially in the more rural areas. In some parts of the nation, only one in 10 families own a vehicle, which further limits transportation options. In addition, if there are tribal elections on the same day as the state and federal elections, and an, ind an individual may be required to travel to separate locations in two separate communities to cast ballots on election day. This can lead to an individual spending many hours in one day driving and waiting in line to vote. I will cover this issue in a minute. A related issue to rural living is mailing address. And Individuals' post office box location may be different, maybe in a different state or county than the individual's residence. A person may reside in Arizona, but their P.O. box and chapter house is in New Mexico. For example, Red Lake Chapter, Arizona, and Crystal Chapter, New Mexico. Or reside in Utah and their P.O. box in Arizona, an issue for residents of Navajo Mountain Chapter, Utah. Some individuals reside in Navajo County, but their P.O. box and local chapter house is in Coconino County. The example is uh, Bird Springs Chapter. For those here, these locations are not familiar, uh, but are an issue for these living there because a discrepancy in the state or county location between an individual's post office box and their physical residence leads to difficulties for individual Navajos in, register, in registering to vote. If the county cannot confirm the location of an individual's residence, it will reject their registration application. Traveling issues, the third. In 2018, Apache County had only two early voting locations on the Navajo Nation in the southern part of the reservation. This resulted in community members from Tisna's Bus Chapter located near the Utah border 
having to drive a 95 mile one way trip to vote early. This is like driving a two lane road from Columbus to Cincinnati, less traffic, but just as long. This is in contrast to off reservation populations with an early voting location in closer proximity to population centers and open for more days and longer hours. By limiting in-person early voting on the reservation, it hinders Navajo citizens, citizens from exercising the right to vote in their preferred manner. In conclusion, an issue related to traveling is that the county precincts do not align with Navajo political subdivisions, the chapters or local government centers, as I mentioned before. An individual's chapter house may be, po may be the polling location of a precinct, but because of where the individual lives, in the chapter area, they are actually not in the same precinct that the chapter house is. For instance, the Cameron chapter directly north of Phoenix, about 200 miles, is not located in one precinct, but is divided between several precincts. A resident of Cameron chapter may be in the Bottaway Gap precinct of Coconino County. If the individual works in Tuba City, the individual would have to take time off work to vote at her, his or her chapter house for a Navajo election and drive to the another precinct polling location in Bodway Gap to vote in the state elections for a trip total of 60 miles. So in summary, there are many other issues we can talk about, but these three language rural area traveling conditions are what I focus on today. And I appreciate the time to give, uh, appreciate the time extended to us uh, for our testimony and I stand for questions. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Mr. President.